get my camera on. Oh, hi, good morning. How are we feeling today? I am feeling very jet lagged. <laughs> we took our kids to Japan last week and got back on Monday and I'm still like, it feels like the middle of the night. I usually don't get jet lagged, but I'm like dying. Um, anyway, we're going to do a really good all around kind of end of quarter power hour. This is sort of what I do with my business. So I thought it would be fun to kind of teach you guys how to do this. Um, it's not like a higher level kind of power hour, but it's definitely just one that kind of gives you a really good overall view on just where you're at with your business this year. It's kind of the end of the quarter. We're going into the next three months, which really is the big push to summit. If you're wanting to be recognized, if you're wanting to like really hit those goals hard, this is a good way to kind of look at your business overall. I think this is a really good thing to do every quarter. Um, and maybe I can teach you a new trick or two as far as just tracking your business goes. I don't know if any of you guys are like, if that stresses you out or if that's exciting. It was like one of the things I love the most. I'm kind of, um, that's like the one thing that was so fun for me is just to look, look at the progress and the growth every single week. It was a really powerful um, building tool that I've realized not a lot of coaches do. Um, but for me, it was so motivating and so important to really check in once a week on Thursdays, right? It's our payday. Yay. Who made a paycheck today? <laughs> um, to just be like, okay, the work that I'm doing is working. And I think a lot of coaches stress over it. Like Michelle just said, it stresses me out. Um, this part should be the fun part. Like, I know it's stressful, but I think it's stressful only when we really aren't seeing the results that we want to. Um, and so what I recommend is really just letting go of expectation when you do this. And instead of like judging it, just really let it be what it is, accept it for what it is and use it as a tool to grow from. So for me, it was... I always had a positive mindset around it. Like, okay, this is where I'm at. That means I can do this at least no matter what again and again and again. And it was always like, whatever I do this week, I'm going to double it next week. That's kind of the mindset that I was in. And whether that happened or not, I didn't really have an attachment to that part. I had more of an attachment to um, the growth, like the mindset, like, okay, if I do $1 more this week, or I do one PV point more this week, then I win. You know what I mean? It was just, it was a very positive thing. And this should be the fun part of your business. Um, so if there are some kinks in the chain there, when you do some of your tracking, I just really want you to pay attention to what those are. Um, let those thoughts kind of come up for you, but then I want you to kind of acknowledge them and then let them go. Just accept it for what it is and kind of move forward. Okay. So that's as far as the tracking section goes, that's kind of what we'll keep in mind. So we have four sections today. I'm just going to share my screen. I posted the tracker already, but I'll do it again at the end, like I do. And then, um, if you have any questions or whatever, as we go, then you can pop them in the chat here. Okay. Oh, that's not expanding. Okay. So the very first couple sections are quick. So we're not going to spend a tremendous amount of time on those. Um, what we're really going to spend a lot of time on is this tracking section, setting goals and the work part of it. Okay. So this very first part, I just like to do a quick check-in um, with myself. So I'm just going to out of this stuff so you guys can see a little better because I know that gets a little crazy. Um, this first little section, I always like to check in with me first. And I think that this is really important. So I always like to say, am I taking care of myself? That's like my number one question. Am I taking care of myself? And it's yes or no. Super simple. I don't complicate it. There's a lot of gray area in this category, but really when it comes down to it, it's yes or no. So answer that question. You can post it in the chat if you want to. Um, am I taking care of myself? And then the next thing that I do after that is I assign really an area of focus. So if I'm 
if it's a no, then obviously the area of focus is easy. If it's a yes, then it really pushes me to set a specific goal in that area. I do a lot better when I have a specific goal that I'm working on with myself. So I'm going to have you take just a minute and I want you to write what your area of focus is going to be for you in your personal journey. So this is your business aside. This is just your physical fitness, your health, your mental health kind of stuff. What's your area of focus for this next quarter? And you can just write it down. I'm just going to put on my background music. Okay, and then if you want to, you can um, you can post in the chat what your focus is going to be. I want it to be like specific. So if you're going to work on mindset, what specifically are you going to work on? What about your mindset needs to transform or change or evolve or grow? If you're going to work on your body, like if you have a specific body goal, what is it? Do you want to build strength? Do you want to add tone? Do you want to create routine? If you do want to create routine, if that's like your, your area of focus, what specific routine do you need to create? A morning routine, a breakfast routine? Like what is the routine, right? Taking care of my nutrition because I'm facing spine surgery. Perfect. That's perfect. Spine surgery. Who's that? I'll have to chat about that after. It's crazy. Lose body fat, build muscle. That's one of mine. Let's do it together. Okay. The next part of it is really the vitals, right? Like our vital behaviors with the business. The invite, invite, invite. Be proof of the product. Working. Do personal development. Um, recognize. What I like to do with this is I just kind of take a mental note and I say, how am I going to do this this quarter specifically? And I write down how for each of these things. How am I gonna invite? How am I going to be proof the product work? Like, how am I going to do that and then show that? How am I gonna do personal development this quarter? How am I going to recognize this quarter? So I just want you to take a couple minutes and spend some time on that section. I actually love it when people share how they're gonna do these things because I think it's really helpful for other people. So if you wanna share yours in the chat, then do. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to just kind of go through and really put some intention behind this part of it.
Okay. That section is quick. So if you want to keep finishing it, you can like explain this next section. Um, oh, I love that you guys shared these. It looks like a lot of you invite through your stories still, which is awesome. Um, let's see. Sharing your meals. I love that. 10 pages a day of personal development. So I will say one thing with your personal development. I think if you assign a specific topic to yourself, sometimes that's really helpful because it brings a lot more attention to it. So like really dialing it back. And I will say too, like if all you do is business, personal development, like leadership, confidence stuff, like I would start to kind of branch out into areas of your life that you're feeling resistance with, because that's really the personal development that's going to grow you and push you further. So if you, if there's like a repetitive pattern somewhere in your life that you're like, why does this keep happening? Or why like do I keep acting like this? Or why, like, what is this one thing that I just like, don't always enjoy about how I react to things or whatever. Those, those are the things that really push you far when it comes to personal development. So don't box yourself into any specific thing with that. It doesn't have to just be business oriented. I know a lot of people have struggle with personal development in this area. And I think once you really find the right personal development, that changes everything. So if you are struggling with this category, it might be that you just haven't found that thing yet that really is helping change your life. There's, you know, for me, a lot of the business, personal development, the leadership stuff, like all of that's amazing, but it's not life-changing for me. That's not like stuff that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like it might change something in my business, but my goal for personal development is personal. It's something to make me a better person, not a better business person or whatever. It's really everything combined. So if I'm like, okay, I want to be better in business this way. And this specific thing is holding me back in my personality or in my life or behaviors or reactions. That's what I'm going to work on. So I really try to just like with your goals, the reverse engineer, really what the issue is until I can figure out the thing that I really need to work on. So that's just a really simple process, like simple analogy to just kind of reverse engineer the issue. Um, but it's not easy. <laughs> so, um, okay. So this next part, the mindset. So this is a really important thing that I've adopted. I do this sometimes weekly, sometimes daily, <laughs> sometimes monthly, just depending on where I'm at. Um, but eliminating fence sitting mentalities is really important. And I call it that specifically for a reason, um, because there's a lot of mindsets that keep us sitting on the fence that we're not really moving forward or backwards. We're just sort of there. And so I want you to identify your top three, like fence sitting mentalities or you know, mindsets that aren't really serving you that maybe again are repetitive. And those are the ones that I want you to write down um, in the toss category. So I toss those and then I adopt a new one that is kind of more of an affirmative statement based off the one that I tossed specifically. So I try to reframe that specific mindset that's holding me back. So a lot of the times I think we adopt you know, affirmations and things that kind of push us forward and move us forward. And that's amazing. I love that. This specific process is to really transform your own personal negative mindsets, the ones that you are ailed with, right? And really just reframing them because when you write them down, the ones that aren't serving you anymore, and then you actually take a minute to reframe it as well and say, okay, like I'm not meant for this. And just being like, no, I am meant for this. Just something that simple, you guys, like really can reframe how your brain, it just creates a new pathway for you to think more positively. And it's a like every time that 
that old habit of that thought comes back, what actually happens is you think about the new phrase that you created for it. So when you do feel that, oh my gosh, I'm not meant for this, automatically your brain's like, no, you are. Remember, you wrote it down, like you are meant for this. And so it's a really powerful exercise. So the more you do it, the more effective it becomes. This is actually how I transformed my self-esteem, like my self-worth, confidence. This is how I did that. I started having zero tolerance for those mindsets that were not serving me anymore. So I'm going to give you five or six minutes to just go through this little piece of it. And then I want you to pick your top one and share it. The top one you're going to toss and how you reframed it. Okay. Deborah, I'm not a good leader. I can't even tell you how many times I said that to myself. <laughs> so many times. I finally was like, it doesn't even matter. Like, maybe I'm a bad leader. Okay, now what? You know what I mean? Like, even if that's the truth, like, does that mean just stop everything and stop trying? No, it just means keep working and stop worrying. That's it. Easy, just kidding. <laughs> it's just easy. I don't have enough time to build the team I dream of, adopt. I will make time because it's important to me. I love that. You would think that this would become a lot easier over time, like the more that you do it, but it actually becomes harder <laughs> for me, this exercise because it becomes a lot more meaningful once you see it really go to work in your life and it really starts to take root and you realize like how powerful this really is and that and you start to like be very careful about what you actually say like when you do this activity you start to become very aware and very intentional about the things that you're writing down because you then know that it really can come through to fruition and I think that this process um, and seeing that go into work helps build belief in a lot of other areas like your business. Like I never, I can't, like one of you said, I can't seem to find the belief that this will work. 
And again, it's like, okay, but if it does or doesn't, does that change the process? Does that change your desire to want it to work? Like whether you believe it will or not is kind of irrelevant because that hasn't happened. That hasn't come to fruition yet, right? So it's really more, it's really more learning how to speak to yourself and really what motivates you specifically, um, what kind of phrasing, what kind of words, what kind of areas motivate you um, more than others. For me, it was always, if I could come back to the process and the work and like becoming the kind of person that deserved success, that could become a leader, that could become a positive influence in people's lives, like that's really what I latched onto more than the end result. And I was able to just kind of let all of the end results go because I had no control over that. What I had control over was the work itself and what I was doing every day to become the kind of person that could cultivate those kinds of results. Does that make sense? That's what helped me, but that may not be what helps you. You might have to be that person that sees that big vision board on your wall with that end result. And that's the only thing you see. And the only thing that matters that drives you to that. And that's super important to understand about yourself. <laughs> okay. We're going to move into this next section because it takes a minute and I want to make sure that we have enough time for it. So we're going to spend a solid 20 minutes on this section. And what I want you guys to do, again, this is really glancing at your business for the last three months and understanding where you're at, understanding your activity level, and then setting a goal, a growth goal based on that information. So what you do is you go into your back office and I want you to look at your personal volume for January, your personal volume for February, your personal volume for March. And you can either write the total of your personal volume for that month, um, or you can write your average personal volume for that month. And the way that you find the average is just adding up all four weeks in January, your personal volume and dividing it by four. And that will give you your average for the month, right? Um, so either way works, but do that for January, February, and March. And once you have all that information right in front of you and you're like, okay, in January, my average PV a week was 150. In February, it was 75. In March, it was 250. You can kind of look at that and say, okay, where do I want to be? Where, what kind of goal can I set with my personal volume? If you're doing totals, you can be like, okay, I did a thousand volume in January, I did 2000 volume in February, and I did 1500 volume in March. And you can kind of look at that and be like, okay, my goal is to hit 2000 volume for the month right? Like you can set a goal based on your own personal activity level. And sometimes when you're just looking at your own personal work, it's easier for you to just be like, okay, this is what I've been capable of up to this point based on everything that's going on in my life. What can I do this quarter to grow? That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't judge it. Just let it be what it is and set a goal based on that. Um, so your personal volume, I want to look you to look at your team volume. If you're Emerald or higher, this will help under, you understand like why you are, or aren't cycling as much as you would like to, um, look at your success club points. Where were you at in January, February, and March, and then set a goal. I love this specific one because it eliminates success club in a way. And it just allows you to look at what you're doing and set a goal based on that. So if you did SC1 in January, SC3 in February, and then you hit success club in March, you can be like, okay, I hit success club, but my average is like three and a half points a month. So maybe I could do four points a month this next quarter. And that can be my goal. And it's shocking how, when you really do it that way, how much more you actually perform because you eliminate a lot of those beliefs or old patterns or pathways that were there before and you create space for new ones. So um, the other one is your income. This is my favorite one. Anyone on my team knows. Um, just seeing how much did I make in January, February, and March. 
Um, and then I actually do like you to figure out your average. So if you add up your total income for the month and then divide it by however many weeks were in that month, that gives you your average of how much you're making a week. I like that more just because it looks more consistent and helps you really understand what your business is doing and the patterns that you're seeing. Is it going up? Like, am I scaling up? Am I scaling down? Am I flat? Like, where am I at here? And then you can set an income goal. And that's kind of fun. Um, just taking note of how many new customers you brought on board since January, how many new partners you've brought on board. And then really, this is the other one that I don't think a lot of people track is how many home direct orders you have going out right now. How many subscriptions, like customers do you have on subscription at the moment? And you can look that up in your customer area. Like you just go to your customers and then you can pull up anybody that has an active HD. My goal when I was a new coach was to get 20 people on HD because that I think equated to like $600 a month or something at the time. And I was like, oh, that would be life-changing for me <laughs> at the moment. And so that's what my goal was there. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys a good solid 20 minutes to work on this get as much information in there as you can so that you can set a growth goal for yourself in each category. Okay. Um, the volume you go into your online office and you just go to volume The on the left-hand corner, there's like a, if you're on your computer, you can just hit volume and then you can see all, and it will take you to all of it. And it has all the little categories written down. So it does take a few minutes to do this. Um, but that's where you can find all your volume success club. You guys know where to look at that, right? Everyone <laughs> income, you know, where to look at that, right? Does anyone not know how to find their income? <laughs> Cause that is something I will fix immediately. Um, and then your new coaches and new, your new partners, you might have to start tracking manually, but you should be able to look that up as well with new coaches in the organization. And then just do it for the year. And then you can see how many of them you actually personally sponsored. Okay, so I'm going to give you a good 20 minutes to work on this. And then we'll move on to the next section. Okay, so now... And if you guys have multiple business centers, just focus on like your main one. You can do this for all of them, but I would focus on your main one today.
If you guys are on your mobile, the subscriptions is actually really easy. You just go down to your business alerts and hit new customer subscriptions. And then when it goes to the next page, you just uncheck new only and then mark active and it pulls all of them up. And literally the number of how many active subscriptions you have at the very top of the list. And it will just show you right there. It's super simple.
Oh, they go. Okay, that felt like it went really fast. <laughs> Did any of you guys get any of your sections done and set a goal? Is it easier to set a goal based off factual information? Yes. Is it easier to set a goal based on what you personally are capable of and have been doing over what someone else is doing that's been doing this for way longer or has a much bigger team or whatever. Yes, like it's way easier to just compete with yourself and then to use all the other comparison and competition out there as a tool to help you hit your own personal growth goals. What I love about this is you can really look at your personal business and grow it from there. You you now have control to be like, okay, this is how many customers I have. This is how many HD subscription orders I have. What I like about the HD part is it's a different way to sell and it's a different way to grow your business that's outside of the success club, total solution mindset that it becomes very monotonous sometimes. So if you're not motivated right now by Success Club, if you're not motivated right now by some of these things that you hear all the time, or even if you are, the HD subscription category was always kind of a bonus and an add-on for me. It was something that I had like 100% control over. It was something that I could calculate into income directly, which was really helpful for me in the beginning because so much is ambiguous and you're like, I don't know. <laughs> In the beginning, you're like, I don't know how much volume creates income. Like you don't just know very much. And so it's these little things that can really become concrete for you that really start to become your foundation that you build from. So for the HD subscription, specifically for me, I looked at it and said, okay, this is how many total HD people I have right now. What's my ultimate goal here? And usually that's for me, I've discovered is double whatever it is. Like that's always going to be my ultimate goal. If I made a hundred thousand dollars this year, next year, my goal is 200. That's just how my brain works. Right. And so again, whether I hit that or not, it doesn't matter, but that's really what I'm working towards. So with HD subscriptions, you can really say to yourself, okay, if I have 10 HD people on Shakeology specifically, that's this much income a month that I'm getting from this. So if I could get five more subscriptions this quarter, I can increase my income every month by X amount, right? Like it's just a way for you to like have a little more control over that part of it. And it's a different way of really 
looking for new customers, looking for new coaches, like it's just a different way to kind of approach that stuff. So if you didn't finish this, I highly recommend going through and finishing it. Um, the team volume part takes a minute because if you're on your phone, you have to add up the left volume and right volume to get that total and then add up every single week of the month. If you're on your computer, I think it gives you your TV, but actually, no, I think you have to add it up still. But what's helpful with that also is I look at that and I say, okay, this is what my team is doing. This is the volume as a whole that my organization is doing. Like this is our collective collaborative effort. And if you're making, you know, 5,000 a month team volume, that's what your team is doing. And you can be like, guys, we're at 5,000 volume a month. Like that's incredible. That's a recognition piece that you can really focus on. Um, I used to really talk about volume annually, and I was always really proud of the, we did 1.5 million volume this year. We did 2 million volume this year. That means we did over $2 million in sales as a team. Like that's when you can start using those tools, but that specific piece also for your income when you're Emerald or higher is how you can really start to understand like why you are, aren't making income based off the team cycle bonus. Because if all your volume is on one leg, you're never gonna cycle, right? Or if your, vol your team volume isn't growing at all, then that's why you're not making any income. There has to be growth, right? In each of these categories. So again, it's not necessarily about what the specific growth is the number it's really just more am i growing am i flat or am i declining in this area <laughs> and that's really a ceo mindset right like you have to know your numbers you have to know where you're at in each category so that like next month if your worst category hands down across the board is your team volume you can say okay that's what we're going to work on this month and you can make it a collective effort for everyone, right? And you can really, again, reverse engineer some of these other areas in your business and, and grow them, okay? That was my high level <laughs> coaching for the day. So this last part, <coughs> I'm sorry, we're gonna do um, some networking connection, inviting, just like our basic stuff. This is my like daily quick list. I do this every single day. Anything I do beyond this is like bonus, but this is like a, I'm doing this every single day, no matter what. This is, I network, I connect, I invite, I coach people, and I recognize in some kind of category. Those are like my top five things. If I can do that at least once a day, then I feel super productive. Um, any other time I spend, any other area I focus on, more specifically is just, again, bonus for me. So I just created this little quick sheet. I'm going to try and zoom it so that you can, right? And then I put seven days. These, so I did it today. I did this today. I did this today. So what I want you to do is be able to check one of these off. Check it off for Thursday. Can I create a post? Can I share it to my stories? Um, do some likes, tag people, right? That's your networking. Can I comment, start conversations, DM and connect with people? <laughs> Can I invite someone new? I don't put a lot of, I need to invite 30 people or 50 people. I just say, did I invite someone new today? Not somebody that's already there, but somebody new. And then I follow through with a coach. I follow through with a challenger at least once a day. And then I do some recognition or some kind of reward. So that's what we're going to work on for this last 15 minutes, this list, and see how far we can get down it, okay? And then we'll wrap up.
Okay, guys. So I hope you can finish that little daily list. It usually takes me about 30 minutes to do that. Just get my post in, just do a really quick check-in in each category, 30 to 35 minutes. I like spending an hour on it. That's usually like the power hour that I do. Um, so for this last like two minutes, I just want you to kind of round up the work that you did over the last hour. So it's really simple to do that. You just kind of do an overall, okay, so what did I decide? What is my personal area of focus? What did I decide? And write that down or share it in the chat. What did you decide is going to be your area of focus for your own personal journey? And then what did you, what is your top adopt? So when you look at your, I'm going to toss this mindset and adopt this one. What's the top one that speaks to you the most there? Which one, what's going to be your adopt for this, this week? What did you decide? And then when you look at your numbers and you look at your business over the last three months, um, when you did all of that work, what did you decide? Or when you look at that, what do you think is your top growth goal? for this quarter, which category do you wanna see the most growth in? What is like exciting for you to see in that area? And just kind of identify that and write it down. And then the last part is, and this is what I say to myself, can I commit to these five daily activities every single day? Can you commit to those five things every day to network, connect, invite, coach people, and recognize either yourself or someone else in your business every single day on, it doesn't matter what scale you do that on, but can you do those five things? Yeah. Everybody can do those five things, right? Like no matter how much time you have or don't, like if you can just prioritize doing those five things at least once a day, I'm telling you, not only will things simplify you'll feel like you're more productive and working less and making more. And just so you guys know, that's always my goal is to work less 
and make more. <laughs> That's like my goal in life. I want to double my income and cut in half my work hours. That's what I want. And so that whenever I'm doing anything, just know that's where my power hours come from. That's everything that's driving my business is to work as little as possible and play a lot more and earn a lot more. Like it is possible to do that. You just have to be really specific with what you spend your time on. So, um, and really understanding what matters to you and what doesn't, not, not spending so much time on the things that aren't really paying you back. You know what I mean? It feels a little selfish. And sometimes it feels like you don't have permission to just do the things that make you income. But I'm telling you guys, you have to do that. If you have a family and you have other people that you're sacrificing time with to do this, it better freaking pay off. Otherwise you are taking advantage of their time. I'm just telling you right now, like that, that for me is like the biggest driving factor and was the first few years I was a coach because I knew if I can't show something for this work that I'm putting in and all this time, I'm ignoring my husband when I'm on my phone or all this stuff, like, what is this for? Like, what's the point of this? You're here to build a business that's profitable not just help people. You want to do both and that's okay. So do both. The coolest part about our business and what I have loved the most and why I've been doing this since 2011 is because I get to make a living helping people. And the more people that I help, the more income I can cultivate and vice versa. That's awesome. That's not ever something to be ashamed of. So get out there, power up, own your business, set some goals, and let's see how we do next quarter. I would love to do this again, this exact same power hour at the end of next quarter. I hope it lines up because it would be awesome to then reference back to this one. This is how I kind of uh, work with my coaches and see their growth over growth goals. We go quarter by quarter and it's cool to be like, okay, in January, you were doing this. Now in June, here's what you're doing. And just to really be able to show you your growth and your progress is so powerful <laughs> um, because we don't get that very much. So thanks for hopping on. I'll see you guys in a couple weeks and I hope you have a good rest of your day.